In this video, I will tell you how I captured the full rotation of planet Jupiter through an amateur telescope that is behind me right now. Jupiter is a gas giant, the biggest planet in our solar system and one of the coolest objects to look at in the night sky. As a gas giant, Jupiter doesn't have a solid surface, but we can observe a lot of different cloud structures in Jupiter's atmosphere. The atmosphere of Jupiter is extremely dynamic, and it changes every day. Just look at this animation of Jupiter that are captured over the course of three different nights, and look how its cloud structure changes. It takes a bit less than 10 hours for Jupiter to complete a full rotation, which means that it is possible to capture an entire day on Jupiter if you have two clear nights in a row with good seeing conditions. And this is actually what I was able to perform earlier in November. So now let's take a closer look at the telescope that I've been using lately to take images of Jupiter. And this is Skywatcher 150 PDS, a 6-inch neutron reflector telescope with a 750 mm native focal length, which is not enough to get a good scale and magnification on the planet. Therefore, I use this barrel lens to increase the magnification power of the telescope. And in my case, I got Teleview PowerMate 5X barrel lens that increases the focal length of this telescope to 3750 mm which gives a good scale image. However, I want to point out that 5x for this telescope probably is above the limits and ideally I would go with 4x barrel lens, but unfortunately I do not have one. I have a couple of 2x barrel lenses and this 5x barrel lens that I'm using tonight. This year my main planetary camera has been SV Boni SV705C. I've been using this camera for a little over the year now and at the beginning of the year I filmed a first video review on this camera. The link will appear in, I think, in this corner and in the description to the video. So when I first got this camera I had some issues with uh, connecting this camera to a fire capture app and I had some color issues. You can check out the video review. The point is that at this moment this camera performs much better and I've been getting really nice images of Jupiter lately. So I'm planning to film a second video review about this camera and if you're interested in this topic please consider subscribing to my channel. Over there I also got ZWO electronic focuser that helps me to achieve focus and it's really helpful when you're trying to capture planets at a high focal length and yes electronic focuser has been really helpful there. On the top of the telescope I got the guide scope and camera that are normally used for guiding in deep sky imaging but when it comes to planetary imaging the guide scope helps me to locate planet Jupiter in the field of view of this bigger telescope. And same as for my deep sky imaging setup, I use mini PC to control this telescope and basically from the mini PC I control the mount, the telescope, the camera, the focuser and everything that I need to run my planetary imaging sessions. All right, so let's delve a bit more into the process of planetary imaging. Uh, I'm connected to my telescope remotely at the moment. To capture planets, I use three different apps. The first one is the Fire Capture app that I use directly to take videos of planets. Second app is PhD2 Guiding that I use to get some views from my guide scope. And the third app is called, and I hope I pronounced it correctly, uh, Cartet du Ciel. It's a planetarium app, kind of the same as Stellarium app but I just like how it performs in my case. So this is a planetarium app that I use to control the mount and point the telescope at any target that I want to. Now let me actually show you how the process of pointing the telescope to a planet and the beginning of the imaging session looks like. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comment section down below. And right now I'm in the planetarium app, the telescope is connected. Yep, everything is fine here. And all I gotta do is basically just to point my telescope to Jupiter. So I click telescope and slew to Jupiter. And as you can see right now, my telescope is uh, slewing and trying to point to the Jupiter. And it's actually really interesting because Deep Sky Imaging Greek is doing Meridian Flip. And by the way, I've been working on a really big project. Uh, I've been capturing a target with a total exposure time it's going to be over 200 hours, so if you're interested in the result for this image, please consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for this 200 hours of total exposure time image. Anyway, the telescope appears to be pointing to Jupiter and let's open the fire capture up. So there is no Jupiter in the field of view of the main imaging camera, but let's look at PhD2 up. We can see planet Jupiter right now on the screen of PhD2 up. 
So this bright star is Jupiter. These two like smaller stars on the top are its satellites. So all we gotta do is just slew the telescope a little and I need to set this Jupiter right at the center of the reticle. Okay, Jupiter appears to be right at the center of the reticle in the guide scope and the guide scope with my main imaging telescope are aligned, which means that if I open fire capture, I'm looking at planet Jupiter. So basically this is how I point my telescope to any object at a high focal length. I just point the telescope at the specific area of the night sky. Then I check if object appears to be at a camera field of view. If yes, everything is fine. If not, I go to PhD2 and uh, center the position of the object. And what I gotta do now is to go to the planetarium up, hit on Jupiter again, my telescope, and synchronize the position with Jupiter. Okay, and this is how Jupiter looks like through an amateur telescope. Uh, this is Jupiter itself. On the right we have its satellite Io. What I usually do is crop the image because I don't need to record the information from whole camera sensor as Jupiter takes just a few pixels out of the whole camera sensor. And normally I crop the image to like maybe 500 by 500 pixels, 600 by 600 pixels. But tonight I'm gonna go a little further and do 800 by 800. And the reason I do that is that because the satellite Europa will appear out of the Jupiter shadow and I want to capture this moment. And actually I gotta hurry up. Okay, so I just cropped the image to 800 by 800 pixels. I gotta center the Jupiter at the field of view, turn on guiding on Jupiter and bring down exposure a little. I capture at 20 milliseconds. Okay, and uh, let me actually begin the imaging process. So I wanted to do 30 second videos at, at the 50 frames per second rate. So at the moment we're looking at Jupiter at 3750 millimeter focal length. As I said earlier, it's a little above the limit and with my specific reflector telescope, it's better to use 4X barrel lens or probably like 3X barrel lens and atmospheric dispersion corrector that will increase the focal length of the telescope. However, I do not have 3X barrel lens. I do not have 4X barrel lens. I have 2X barrel lens. I do not want to stack them together. So I've decided to go with 5X barrel lens from Teleview, it results in this characteristics for the camera. So as I said earlier, I capture at 50, well, like 51, 52 frames per second rate. And in order to keep the planet bright on the camera sensor, I really need to push up my gain. And as you can see, it's set to 360 at the moment, which brings out lots of noise on the image. And as you can see, although we see uh, some like details in the Jupiter atmosphere, we see it's uh, different cloud structures, even the great red spot in the camera field of view over here, uh, but still we have a lot of noise. So yeah, this is how the beginning of the imaging process looks like. Uh, basically I start with pointing my telescope to a target of interest, it's Jupiter in this case. After the telescope is pointed to Jupiter, I look to fire capture up and check whether the Jupiter is in the camera field of view or not. If it is, everything's fine, I go further. If not, I go to PhD2 up and center the Jupiter at uh, the center of the camera field of view. And then I go back to planetarium and synchronize the planetarium with uh, the mount. Then I go back to fire capture, crop the image, uh, center the planet in the uh, field of view. As I said earlier, normally you do not want to have so many uh, dark background area available. Once the Jupiter is centered, I check the focus. After the focus, I go to imaging settings, uh, set up exposure and gain. Uh, ideally, when you're imaging planets, you want to have as highest frames per second rate as possible, but you still want to keep your uh, planet pretty bright on the camera sensor, so you gotta kind of play between uh, the exposure time and the gain. Then I turn on guiding so that I don't have manually to track the position of the planet and uh, correct it every time. The app will do it for me. Uh, then I open the icons located right here 
the auto sequencer where I said how many videos I want to take, uh, the video duration. Then I wait for results basically. Uh, yeah, the only thing um, if we open the planetarium up, probably maybe in 30 to 40 minutes, the Jupiter will go on the other side of the night sky. So I'll have to perform the meridian flip. For meridian flip, basically what I need to do once Jupiter is going on the other side of the sky is to hit on Jupiter, hit telescope and salute Jupiter again. And uh, then the telescope will perform the meridian flip. Now you know how planetary imaging looks like in my case. And when it comes to processing the images, there are additional software that I use to process my images. And if you're interested in this topic, please let me know in the comment section down below and I will film a separate video about it. If you enjoyed watching this video, please hit the like button, consider leaving a supportive comment in the comment section down below. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you a full rotation of planet Jupiter that I captured over the course of two nights earlier in November. And also I'll share with you an animation of the appearance of the Europa satellite that I didn't get yet, but I'm going to get by the end of this night. I really hope to see you in the future videos guys and until next time.